I made a lush jungle cave aquarium for my rope fish. But before we dive into all of that, let's first rewind a bit. Over a year ago, I got my hands on some truly unique fish. Eel-like creatures called rope fish. The first home was less than ideal. A temporary setup until I could give them something better. I wasn't proud of this setup and the fish clearly weren't happy with this tank. Luckily, it wouldn't take long before an opportunity presented itself. Fast forward a few months to my new animal room. I was determined to create a better tank for these guys. Unfortunately, a bigger tank wasn't an option yet, so I focused on a major rescape. I created a central plant island surrounded by leaf litter, which was a significant improvement over their previous home, and their behavior transformed dramatically because of it. Gone were the days of friendling darts around the tank and climbing in the filter. In their place was calm foraging among the leaves. This experience taught me a crucial lesson. Ropefish crave hiding spots. Just like many other fish, ropefish become more confident and visible when they feel secure. Think of it this way. If a fish knows it can be hidden away with one flick of its tail, it's gonna be way more confident swimming around the tank. And with that in mind, I set out to create a feature I haven't seen on YouTube yet. But I'm getting ahead of myself. First, we need to get them a new tank. I decided to build a plywood aquarium. I layered two sheets of plywood, making sure to overlap all of the seams. And then waterproofed everything using epoxy. I made a separate video about the whole process of building a tank, and I'll link that video at the end of this one. At this point the tank isn't ready to be scaped just yet, as I first had to drill a couple of holes, add some bulkheads, and then make sure it could still hold water. And while we're patiently waiting for the water test, we can prepare the scape. The unique feature I hinted at earlier was to make a cave for these fish. This may not sound so unique, but I've never seen it done like this. Most caves you see have big openings, are open on both sides, or are not really caves, but rather something like a coconut with a hole cut into them. And I'm not trying to hate on those. If that's what works for you, by all means go for it. I would just like to create something else. This little structure doesn't look groundbreaking just yet, but you've got to trust the process. Meanwhile, the tank has passed the water test, so it's time to start building the 3D background. I knew I wanted to make a background using lava rock, but I was unsure how much I would need. So I went ahead and bought 45 kilos of this stuff, which was way too much. I ended up using only around 20 to 25 kilos. To attach the rocks, I flipped the tank on its back and balanced it on a couple of boards to make sure I wouldn't damage the bulkheads. After dry filling some rocks, it was time to start attaching them to the tank. I used 80 grit sandpaper to scuff up the background and started attaching the rocks using black expanding foam. I also stuffed pieces of paper towel in the bulkheads to make sure they wouldn't get filled up by the foam. Once the background was completely covered with rocks and foam, I set it aside to dry. And while I waited for the foam to cure, I decided to get started making the filter's return piece. I was planning on just buying a piece, but the one I wanted wasn't available, so I decided to try and make one myself. I already had a very similar piece, but it needed to have a threaded end. So first I cut the elbow of an elbow hose connector and then wedged a piece of filter hose over the top. I then cut another piece of filter hose and boiled this piece in water for about a minute. This softens it, allowing me to stretch it out a bit. And I could now add it around the other piece. I let it cool down and carefully round over the edges so I could add the final piece. And just like that we made our own filter return piece. 5 hours later the foam had completely cured and I could start carving away the excess. Going one section at a time I then applied a little bit of super glue, covered it in lava rock dust and brushed away the excess. This is a slow process that uses a lot of dust and a lot of glue but I think the results are well worth it. I also added the filters return and intake and just like that the background was done. But we're not only covering the background. I flipped the tank on its side and repeated the same process two more times.
remember the cave we made earlier, it's time to include it in the build. I build a wall through the middle of the tank to elevate the substrate and hide the cave. I also got this corbo root tree stump that I included in the wall. This piece is completely hollow and will act as a second height. Once everything was secured in place, I also got myself this beautiful piece of black spider wood. I chose this piece for all its tiny little roots, which will help me add much needed detail to the hardscape. I chopped off all the individual roots off camera and started weaving them among the wall. And I'm trying to make it look like all the roots are part of the same stump on the left. I glued these to both the foam and the rocks and at the same time applied dust over everything. Most of these could be glued directly to the hardscape, but for a few pieces I need to fill the gap with some paper towel covered in glue and then glue some dust over top. I also use this technique to make the entrance to the cave less square. And after a week of foaming, carving and gluing, the hardscape was finally done. Which means it's now time to start adding the substrate. Behind me you see the river tank we set up a couple of months ago and for this tank substrate we went for a multi-layer approach using dirt, aqua soil, root sticks and a mixture of gravel and sand. I'm really loving how this tank is turning out so we're gonna do something similar on this new tank. So first I'm adding about two centimeters of pond soil behind the wall. Fun fact, the soil I'm using here is the excess you saw me remove from the pond plants a few videos back. On top of the pond soil and in front of the wall, I'm next adding a layer of Colombo Mano Base Black. And then finalize everything with a layer of black gravel. And to soften the edge between the gravel and the big rocks, I'm adding in a few of these small lava rocks. Before adding the plants, I wanted to do one final water test. This may seem redundant, but I'm glad I did, as it did in fact leak. After inspecting the tank, I figured out the tank itself luckily isn't leaking. The problem lies in the connection between the elbow and the filter hose. The filter I'm using came with these ripped hoses that were great if you use the included intake and return. But not so great if you want to attach them to a system like this. I replaced the hoses with standard final ones and just like that the leak was gone. But just to be sure, I did leave the tank sitting for over a week before continuing. And while I waited, I already added a bunch of bladder snails. These will help keep the algae down, but more so, be a little snack for the rope fish and make sure the tank stays cycled until we add the plants and fish. And while we're on the topic, I'm using a Fluval 407 and I've been cycling the filter media in my pond for the last two months. So once we get this thing completely scaped, we can stock it immediately. Now let's get back to scaping. I drained the tank and started by adding these two Anubius Nanas and glued patches of weeping moss to two of the rocks and the wood. I got a bunch of different plants for this one and I first want to add off the foreground plants. I started out by first attaching Bulbitis Hedoloti to one of the rocks on the far right side of the tank. 
Next, I added various species of Anubias and Bucephalandra among the roots and a few on the walls. Next, I added a few Amazon swords behind the stump. I also got this mystery plant from my brother that I placed on the left side of the tank. I have no idea what species this is, so if you do, please let me know in the comments below. Next, I filled the tank back up with water, and at this point the tank may seem very small. But looks can be deceiving. This tank is much deeper than your typical rectangular tank. Left to right, this tank is 80 cm wide, and front to back, it's just over 60 cm deep. In total, this tank holds just over 200 liters, or roughly 53 gallons. With the tank now filled up, it's time to start adding the background plants. First, I'm going to add this green tiger lily. For now, it only has one small little leaf, but I'm hoping this can become a centerpiece plant. Right behind that, I'm adding a big bush of Anthenanthera. And in the back right corner, I'm adding Hygrophila corambosa. To contrast all of these bigger leaves, I'm peppering in stems of Limnophila heterophila. And finally, to soften the edges, I'm adding an assortment of Cryptocorini in front and behind the wall. I just need to top the tank off and now we can add the fish. This tank was specially designed for rope fish, so let's add them first. Next, I'm adding a group of tiger barbs. And I know, these fish are notorious bullies. But if you go with a big enough group, say 8 or more individuals, all the bullying will disappear. I decided to go with an even bigger group than that and got myself 15 tiger barbs. Anyway, with the fish in the tank I was extremely curious to see how the ropefish would react to the cave. And I didn't have to wait very long. Only minutes after being added to the tank, the first ropefish went to inspect the cave. Slowly but surely he went all the way in there, disappearing in the darkness. A few minutes later he popped his head back out, inspecting his new territory. And this is exactly how I was hoping they would react with the cave. I'm also really enjoying the tiger barb ropefish combination, but I'm still missing something. I would like to add some kind of cleanup crew, but I haven't decided what species yet. I'm thinking about maybe adding a group of gold laser corridoras or pendagara or maybe something completely else. Let me know what you guys think in the comments. So we're now a couple of days later, uh, the tank has cleared up completely, the fish have settled in nicely and overall I'm decently happy with the tank. However, there's one plant that I just, I'm not feeling it. There's this one red plant in the middle of the tank and uh, the rope fish have uprooted a few of the stems and uh, I guess they agree with me, it just doesn't fit in this tank. So what I've decided to do is go in there, completely remove this red plant. I believe it was an alternate era. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to replace it with stems of this little rotala from the shrimp tank. It has a really nice bright green color, really small leaves. So first we're going to work on the shrimp tank. We're going to grab those cuttings, bring them over to the rope fish tank, put them in there and uh, then we'll see how we'll like that.
absolutely love how this tank turned out and I can't wait to see it develop over time. At times the building process felt really similar to my riverscape. That tank came with its own set of challenges and if you haven't seen that video already, you can click right here. But if you'd rather learn more about building plywood tanks, I recommend you watch this video next. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.